All of Lahia Twin, good evening. This is our BCN News Bulletin leading our news tonight. It has been almost three weeks since the new population and household census was conducted and the Statistics Department has released some provisional figures which make for interesting reading. Based on data collected, the total provisional population of Niue as of census night on September the 10th, the population stands at 1,615, 815 males and 803 females, including visitors to the island. This represents the overall count of all persons on Niue at the time of the census. Of the total population, 1,176 reported or claimed to be Niueans and 452 non-Niueans. Based on those figures, the ratio for every 10 Niueans, there are 4 non-Niueans, except for the case in the village of Vaya, where the ratio is for every 10 Niueans, there are 21 non-Niueans. Also at the time of the census, a total of 134 persons were recorded to be absent from Niue, that is excluding students on studies abroad and those on medical referrals. A third of those absent were from the village of Alofi South. For the household and dwelling portion of the census, there was a total of 489 private households with 19 non-private households, including yachts. About a third of the private households were also located in Alofi South. The information and data released are provisional and the final comprehensive report of the new census will be made available by June of next year. A renewable energy project funded by the European Union EDF-10 will be inspected by the Bulk Fuel Department of Government rather than the Initial Implementing Department EPDSU as an initiative by Bulk Fuel to address people's concerns with some of the products installed. Director of Bulk Fuel, Mr. George Valiana, said the department wanted to address people's concerns. We received a lot of concerns from you know the users in terms of uh, faults and defects on you know just the appliance itself. We've had issues on uh, the installations, so. Um, a lot of it has just been, you know, verbal from the users to various sectors. Um, so we've taken the opportunity of actually doing the inspection and logging it down, um, you know, on paper and then creating a database from there mm -hmm. um, so that we could, uh, you know, actually say that, you know, these are the faults and these are the areas that we need to address. Mm -hmm. We want uh, the household occupants to just leave things as is in terms of uh, you know the installation if they've changed it if they've done some you know changes to the installations then just leave it as it is because we won't know the problems until mm -hmm. we can actually see what they've done or changed if not uh, we would like you know at least someone at least someone who uses the stoves a lot to be present at home to you know so that we could talk to mm -hmm. um and yeah and just be present so that you know we can have a good discussion on on uh, what the issues are Another reason the department agreed to initiate the inspection is that the implementing project did not have supporting mechanisms to continue monitoring the project. We've taken this initiative. I mean, it's true that you know, a lot of the projects are just you know, left hanging after you know implementation stage. But the reason we've taken the initiative is because of the, you know, the safety aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So we can't just leave something, you know, particularly with the has hazardous nature of LPG. So we've taken the initiative to actually address it now and then find out the issue so that we can, you know, start uh, putting, it, putting in some remedies to some of the issues that people will raise. We hope to be, you know, at least providing a lot of input uh, towards the, you know, ensuring that the project is a success. And I guess measuring the success of such projects is based on, on you know, how it's operating and not just merely on the implementation now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yes, we will be, well we hope so, yeah, to be involved in it. The sentiments has also been supported by the implementing department who said there was no supporting role in the original project for such initiatives and they are pleased that Bulkfield has taken the lead in implementing this strategy. They said the new proposed development of the project to bring more gas stoves and solar systems to the island will be handled differently. 
The inspection program will start with the southern part of the island and the department is proposing to visit two villages a day. Newest tuberculosis control program is under assessment this week with the arrival of a SPC consultant to review the progress made, especially utilising global funds towards TB control on the island. Dr Janet O'Connor has been contracted by SPC to conduct an audit of a number of TB control programs in the region and NIWA is among this initiative to stop TB, which is also one of the Millennium Development Goals. We spoke with Dr O'Connor about NIWA's progress in its implementation of TB control. NIWA control program is, uh, TB control program is one of our uh, good programs here in the region. The, the tuberculosis, as you know, in NIWA is not an issue at all. And uh, the, the few cases that uh, have been reported here in Newe have, uh, have been very uh, sporadic. Uh, one case was reported in the year 2000, two cases in the year 2002, and one case in the year 2011, this year. So four cases in about 10 years, 10 to 11 years, and that's hardly uh, significant. For our MDG goals and uh, stop tuberculosis uh, global targets for the year 2015, and these are to uh, reduce by 50% the prevalence rate of tuberculosis and also to reduce the number of people dying from tuberculosis also by 50% by 2015. And then one, there are three main targets, and then the other one at the uh, is about the incidence rate. That means the new cases that come up in during the period of um, between now and 2015. So these three targets in the region, it, they, the prediction and based on the data that we have and WHO has now shows that the region as a whole, including Niue, is on track for achieving those targets by 2015. Tuberculosis or TB is a common and in some cases lethal infectious disease caused by various strains of microbacteria spread through the air or otherwise saliva. The Pacific Regional Tuberculosis Control Project was established at SPC in 1998 but began implementation in year 2000. The goal to stop or eliminate TB is on track within the region with the various programs but community awareness and support is also a factor. When we look at the data that is available from at least the year 2000, and there hasn't been any tuberculosis, at least among the indigenous New England population, and uh, the few cases that we've identified are in the minority population groups that have come to New England. And so I think what's important is to to, to protect the 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 population that are now in new way and uh, by strengthening the policies within the countries and I think important most importantly is strengthen the policy screening policies from the country of origin especially for the minority you know the immigrant workers who are coming to new way I think it's important to make sure that we screen them first and I think that, that there are some policies in place and I understand that New Way is uh, strengthening those uh, offshore policies. And then uh, when the peace, uh, people come into the country, into New Way, there, there should be also some policies of screening at that point. So it's a second screening uh, when they arrive in the country. The other thing that I think is also important is the community awareness and education because I think there's a, a, the disease is, is, is a stigma in the, the population, and I think that that happens to all, all over the world. And I think in order to help the elimination of tuberculosis, we need to get the support from the community and the understanding, because unless we do that, it will be very difficult to, to try to eliminate tuberculosis, which is a very possible goal here in New England. It can be eliminated, but I think the important thing is to, to get the, 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 the community with the, the, the program so that to, to support the program. It, it, it would be difficult to do it just by, you know, by the health, Ministry of Health. 
Dr O'Connor will depart the island tomorrow but hopes that Nui's TV control program will continue to deliver favorable results that may see the goal of eliminating TB on the island by 2015 realized sooner than expected if certain policies are developed. Wales Alive and Omatafua research continues to study the giants of the sea in Niue waters that will assist in determining the number of whales frequenting our waters as well as migratory habits. Olive Andrews from Wales Alive said there are many factors in collecting information relevant to whales research. We've been in Niue now for four weeks, um, Wales Alive and Omatafua working on the Niue Whale Research Project. Um, this is our third season in Niue and so we're really excited to come back and, and be on the water here. Um, we had a lot of whales in our first week and um, in the last three weeks has been very quiet for whale sightings. So what we had is a peak of the whale migration through Niue in August this year um, and due to our other projects and, and work at home we were only able to come up in September this year. So we missed the majority of the whales um, but we've still had a really successful field season and we've had um, we've managed to get two skin samples um, from humpback whales so we'll be taking that back to Auckland University where we'll be able to extract the DNA and learn who those whales are related to right around the region. Um, secondly we got quite a few sound recordings and we've recorded Nui's whale song for 2011 um, so we have some really great recordings to take back which will um, be able to indicate the cultural transition um, of song types from um, uh, east through to west in the, in the South Pacific. And um, thirdly, we've been taking photographs of the whales and we have um, successfully got 10 um, individual photographic IDs of different whales in Niue. So those 10 whales that we've photographed their flukes or the underside of their tail, um, we'll be able to match those with our catalogue from Niue in previous years to see if we've seen them before and also to see if they've been seen in other Pacific Island countries because we have um, had a couple of matches from one whale that we photographed here in Niue in 2008 was seen in Tonga in 2006 and another one was seen in the Cook Islands in a previous year. So our whales are in fact um, Pacific whales. They are um, a shared resource and they're not necessarily just coming back to Niue each season. So we're learning about the distribution of these animals just by the photography. That is Olive from Wales Alive. Their counterpart Omatafua was started by our very own Fia Fia Rex. If you wish to donate to this worthy cause, contact Ms. Vanessa Marsh at the Newer Tourism Centre. And to end our news this evening, the Newer Rugby Union's 10 aside competition will go ahead this weekend with four teams registered. Following a meeting held today with the team managers and captains, the competition will see games played midweek on Tuesdays and Thursdays, as well as games on Saturdays that will open with Tamamana Rugby. This Saturday, we'll see Alofi take on Amasele at 3 p.m. and Tuapa versus Likula Kapam Dalo. Games will proceed until mid-October. And that is our news bulletin that we have for you tonight. We do hope that you can join us again for our next news bulletin next week. Do enjoy your weekend ahead.